everyone, welcome to Christina Cakes It. I'm Christina and today I'm showing you how to make a surprise inside leopard cake. So I love surprise inside cakes. I think they're so fun to make and the reason I like them so much is because they're like kind of one of those things that the person who's looking at it can't really figure out how you did it. And I love making things that are just really interesting. So I've already created a surprise inside cake for my channel. I made a Christmas tree surprise inside cake that was like really cool, I loved it. And I always knew I wanted to do another kind of design with that surprise inside. And since I love leopard, I decided I was gonna do a leopard surprise inside cake. This cake is actually much easier to create than I thought it was going to be, and I'm so excited to show you guys how I made it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna think about when you're making a leopard inside cake is the cake batter that you're gonna be using to create the pattern. And I wanted something that was really thick because it's gonna have different colors and I don't want it to like bleed everywhere. So what I'm using is my very best vanilla cake recipe and I doubled it. And you can find that recipe also on my channel. Um, but I like it because it's just a really thick cake batter. And so I did double the recipe and you can see here in this bowl, I have about 12 cups of cake batter. And my thought is I'm gonna make a three layer cake and this is enough for four layers, but I wanted a little bit of extra in case I needed to play with the colors. Um, but maybe I'll get four layers out of this, I'm not sure. So as I said, I have 12 cups here and I'm gonna divide this out and I'm obviously gonna be making some brown and black batter for the spots. And I'm actually gonna be making a little bit more black than brown. So I'm gonna start with three cups here that I'm gonna make black. And then for the brown, I'm gonna do two cups. And since I have quite a bit of batter, I'm thinking that if I need a little bit of extra of either color, I'm gonna have enough of the plain batter to make a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use some gel food coloring just to dye my cake batter. So I'm using Americolor in Super Black for my black. It's like my favorite black food coloring. And next I'm gonna work on my brown cake batter and I'm also using Americolor gel food coloring, and this is a chocolate brown. And I'm actually gonna start with a little bit less than I think I might need, because um, I don't want this too dark. And you can always add in more food coloring, but you cannot take it away, so start conservatively. So now that my batter is colored, I'm going to go ahead and actually put it in piping bags. This is gonna be really important for the pattern that we're gonna create. And I'm actually gonna end up using probably a lot more piping bags than this, um, but I'm just gonna get the initial ones ready. So my plan is to create a three layer eight inch cake. Um, so obviously I'm gonna be using um, eight inch pans and I do have a fourth one just in case I have enough of the batter to make that fourth layer. Um, so obviously this is an eight inch pan. Um, this pan has definitely been used. It might be time for me <laughs> to get some new cake pans, um, but nonetheless, it's gonna do the job. And I've already prepared it with some baking spray. So to start with, I'm just going to put a little bit of my plain batter on the bottom of the cake pan. And what I'm gonna do next is take my black and just sniff the end of this. And I'm not gonna go too far. I'm going for thin black lines. I can always obviously cut more off, but I can't, you know, put it back on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make four rings around my cake pan. So now I'm gonna take my brown and I'm gonna snip the end actually 
to make this like a little bit wider than the black. But still not going too far up and I'm just going to go over the black that I just did. And now I'm gonna go and use my black again and go over the brown. This is like really testing the hand-eye coordination. And now I'm gonna go and take my vanilla and basically go around and like fill in between those spirals that I just created. And I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this process with the rest of my cake pans. with creating the pattern within the cake batter and the next step is obviously to bake my cake layers and as it turns out I did have just enough for three layers um, so I'm glad I planned that little bit of extra cake batter. So these are gonna go into the oven according to your cake batter's instructions and for me that's about 25 minutes. So through the magic of editing, it's about an hour and a half later and my cakes have obviously baked and cooled and they are ready to get leveled so that I can stack crumb coat and frost the cake. Um, I think I'm gonna finish off with a really cool painted buttercream leopard design on the outside. So I'm just gonna get this all ready for that. So I'm gonna begin by leveling my cake. So I'm just cutting off this top um, like little dome that has baked up. And next I'm just going to brush some simple syrup onto the cakes. Um, this is optional, but honestly it's really not optional for me. I, I feel like simple syrup is a game changer in keeping your cakes like really fresh tasting. They will not dry out. Um, and if you want a tutorial on that, I do have a quick tutorial on simple syrup on my channel. But really all it is is a cup of water and a cup of sugar, like equal parts and just boil them for about five minutes, let it cool, and there's your simple syrup. And I add it to pretty much every single cake, um, especially because I do a lot of like decorating and you know, the cake can tend to dry out and I feel like this just really helps it. So before I start stacking my cake, I always put a little bit of buttercream on the cake board. Um, <laughs> this is gonna help the cake so it doesn't like slide around. I've definitely forgotten it a time or two and it can be a little bit of a problem, so little buttercream on the cake board and I'm just going to and now I'm just gonna go ahead and start um, stacking and frosting and crumb coating so I'm just using some American buttercream um, to frost the cake and I did use a little bit of icing whitener because I wanted it really white As I am stacking my layers, I am giving a hard press down on the cake um, because I do want to get like any air out so that there's less of a chance for this cake to have any bulges on it. That would be tragic. So now that I have my crumb coat done, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the fridge. I am going to give it another really thick final layer of buttercream before I start painting my leopard design.
so my cake looks super cute on the outside and let's see if the inside matches. And I'm so excited the leopard design turned out and this cake is so interesting and I had so much fun creating this surprise inside leopard cake and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this really cool technique and if you did like this episode don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.